Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Um, it's finished Friday once again, and I'm excited to be able to show you how to be able to make some aged looking pots, clay pots. So I think I've taken you shopping before, and I have to my little antique mall behind us here on Summer Avenue here in Memphis, Tennessee. Um, but you can get clay pots at estate sales and garage sales and antique malls very inexpensively or you can head to your hardware store and get them because all you're gonna need are some regular clay pots like this. But maybe you've been into a really cute home decor store and you've noticed that they had really adorable, they call them more pitch pots um, or um, painted pots like this and they cost about three to four times more. So I'm gonna show you a very easy way to be able to get the look in those really more high-end home decor stores yourself using our um, Toscana Milk Paint. So, we do have a bundle for you this week. Um, it is going to include a matte sealer, um, our antiquing glaze, and a couple of Amy Howard at Home brushes. One thing that you need to remember as we're gonna be working on these milk paints is if we're going to put them outside, we've got to seal them. So this matte sealer doesn't have a sheen to it, um, it's, a, it's as about as mad as you can get with still having UV protection to be able to use them outside. And we're gonna be working with our antiquing glaze. So you'll be able to pick any color you want um, to be able to create your look on your, on your particular clay pots. All right, so I'm gonna set this aside. Now remember, um, if this is your first time to catch us, we are coming here from Memphis, Tennessee. It's 12 o'clock Central Standard Time on Friday afternoon. So it's almost June. So everybody's gonna be thinking about having all different kinds of pots with herbs in it um, and your flowers. I love having them in my kitchen. I always like having some flowers or herbs um, in my kitchen and then directly outside of my kitchen window to be able to see. You may even like making these pots to be able to put on your front porch so you can have different levels. You can have large ones and small ones and medium ones. So that way you've got a whole different grouping of maybe lantana or different flowers that will flow over these clay pots. It's a great look, but remember, we're gonna have to seal it. So let's go over really quickly um, how to do this. So if you've watched me before paint with milk paint, you kind of learn how to mix it, but maybe somebody has never seen this before. Maybe you'll be seeing this on YouTube later and you wanna be able to know how. So I'm gonna show you how we're gonna mix this up. So because these clay pots are a matte finish, and they usually are not dirty, we don't have to clean them with clean slate. We can start directly um, painting on top of this clay pot. If it's got a bunch of stuff already on it, you do need to make sure that you clean it. And of course, we always clean with the clean slate. So we're gonna take our Toscana Milk Paint. This is our Strasburg White. And remember, we always mix it one part water to one part paint. So that way, the reason we keep this in its powder form, it is an actual milk. Um, and when you mix it up, it has a shelf life on it. So it's only good for about two weeks if you keep it in the refrigerator. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna add just a little bit of tap water. Remember, as we always talk about, the tap water that we use, um, it's fine. It doesn't matter where you live as far as using it, but make sure it's a warmer or room temperature tap water because if it's colder, it's not gonna mix as well. So it's better to add just a little bit at first. You'll notice it's kind of like cooking. I don't um, measure it. If you're uncomfortable with that, you can uh, definitely measure it. So I'll usually start out and let it be a little bit thicker, like this. I don't want to paint with it thick, especially when I'm doing these clay pots. I want the paint a little thinner because it's going to be prettier when I go to antique it. So that way, if you mix it a little bit thicker like this, you'll be able to get the grittiness out of it. And if you've heard me say this before, I usually like mixing my paint the night before, and then that way I don't have these little grits in it. See that, that grittiness from the paint? That will have a tendency to dissolve if you make it the night before. Or if you don't, you wanna do it that same day, just get some cheesecloth and strain it. So that way, mix it thicker like this, and now I'll come back and I'll add just a little bit more water. Now, if you're catching us live, yay you, this is a chance for you to be able to ask questions and I'll answer them live. I have two uh, people, one on Instagram and one on Facebook, so that way I'm here and I can answer your questions live. Remember, there are no dumb questions. We all learn from each other. All right, so I've got some that we mixed up right before we went live, and I'm gonna set this aside because I'd really like for it to sit there for just a few minutes. 
and I'm going to mix this up just a little bit more. Here's the other thing. When you're working with milk paint, guys, please make sure it's not, you understand that it's not like regular paint. It doesn't have um, the chemicals and things in it to make it to where it doesn't separate. So as you're working on it, you just kind of want to agitate it. I'll keep a little spoon or a little stir stick. Just kind of agitate it because what will happen, the pigment will fall down to the bottom of the bowl of the container that you've mixed it in and the water's going to stay on the top. So every time you are working with it, usually, um, I don't even think about it, it's just like second nature now. I'll just take my brush and I'll just kind of agitate the bottom of it and then brush it on. As you start to work with the mill paint, you'll realize kind of um, the idiosyncrasies about it um, and you won't think you won't think twice, it won't bother you at all. Most people know that the milk paint's one of my favorite finishes on everything because it's so authentic looking. All right, so are there any questions? Are we good? Yes. Someone wanted to know, can they use crack gesso with this process? Who's that person? I'll have to go back and look. Okay, all right, <laughs> yes you can. If you want to be able to crack this, yes you can. So the crack gesso would go on first. Somebody's going, what's crack gesso? Um, do, I, do we have a bag of it? Is there one under here? Let me see. Um, all right, so this is it. This is Crack Gesso. Um, this is a product that is um, only available through us. It doesn't exist anywhere else. We formulated this process. Um, but the Crack Gesso can be mixed with water just like your milk paint. And this is what goes underneath the milk paint if you want to crack it. So yes, great question. Love that. Love. So that, that means somebody that's been listening and watching and we have the best customers or clients. I just, I love, and let me use this as just a tag for this. Um, if you are not part of our before and after group on Facebook, please join. You will be so inspired by all of the projects that everybody does, the products that they use, whether how they gild something or how they use antiquing uh, glaze or their waxes or the colors. I promise it will inspire you and it's a beautiful community of creatives that are DIYers just like us. All right, so I'm gonna mix this up just a little bit more. And now remember, because I'm working with a clay pot, I don't have to, I don't have to clean it if it's just coming raw like this. But I have two tools that I can use. I can use a seawall sponge or I can use a brush. So the bundle, if you get it, you're actually gonna get um, the seawall sponge. I mean the uh, two brushes in it. One because you're gonna need one to be able to put on the sealer. But I'm gonna show you a couple of different options. If you use a seawall sponge, don't use this prickly, this part where it's grown up on the top because they're too small. What I want you to use is I want you to use the underneath where this would have been attached like this. It would have grown like this. First thing you're going to have to do too, you're going to notice this one is kind of hard. You need to immerse it in water before you ever start to work with it. See this one? I've already put it in water. Look at the difference. This one's already put, in, put back into water. You need to put it back in its natural state before you work with it. Don't use the milk paint as the water, okay? Put it in water first, and then that way it's pliable, and now you can start using it as a tool. So we wanna make sure that we're working with this underside, that it's kind of open like this, not tight on the top. And I'm gonna dip it in here like this. And then you can come back and you can paint it like this. Now, a lot of people would say, well, why would you sponge that on versus brushing it on? I'm gonna show you in just a second. Be sure and tell me when there's a question where I can answer it while I'm working. Look at the coverage on that, boom. We say booyah here, but look at that. It's like, done, you can paint these in no time. Painting with these natural seawall sponges are fun. They get really good coverage. It goes on really nice and easy. I wouldn't put on any more than that. That's perfectly all right. Um, if you've got just a little bit of holidays, we're going to antique it anyway, so it's okay. Look how it's already starting to dry. Here's the other cool thing about working with the, with the milk paint. It's going to dry almost instantly. It's, it's kind of hot here in the studio today. Um, so in another, um, say, five or ten minutes, this is going to be dry and I'm ready to go to the next step. So here's the other option. Now let me show you what working with the brush. See how I'm agitating this? I want to be able to make sure that it's stirred up because it will have a tendency to separate. If you brush this on, like this, when you go to antique, you may, you may run into seeing kind of the brush strokes. See that? So see why it's kind of nice to come back and actually put it on with a seawall sponge? Both will work. Both will work. But if you've not worked with the natural seawall sponge before, it's kind of a nice thing to introduce you to. All right, so I'm gonna set that aside. I already have one that is completely dry. 
you know, the other nice, nice thing is with working with the milk paint is the fact that it has no VOCs. Um, it's like the ingredients, it literally is milk. So it's like shopping in the, um, the grocery produce aisle um, as far as working with these products. You don't have to worry about them at all. Um, and if they're safe for your health. So then they come in a lot of different colors. So one thing that you, if you're not familiar uh, with our milk paint, you can mix them. So the pigments that we use in here are, they come from Provence and they are in their natural state. They're organic. Um, they come from quarries there. And the color that you see it in is the color that it's gonna dry. So when it's in its, when it's, in its natural state, um, that's the color that it's gonna be. I wanna antique this first, but I just wanna show you this. So I'm gonna be working with some green on my second step. So that, I can make that a little bit darker if I want to by adding a little um, black to it. So let me see, I've got just a little bit of Scandinavian gray, I may add some of that to this. And mix that up. So that way you can see the color that your green is gonna go, or whatever color that you're mixing in the dry state. Once I add water, this is gonna go darker, but when it dries down, that's the color that it's gonna be. All right, but first, after my pot is dried, I wanna come back and antique it. So I'm gonna take my antiquing glaze, and I'm going to put it in a bowl. Let me see. I'm gonna pour some in here. I'll do it in this one. That's why it's a little bit easier for you to see. Make sure you shake this up. Hold on, there's probably a tab in here where I need to open this. I'll just pour it in there. All right, so now I'm gonna take my other seawall sponge now, when you're working with the antiquing glaze, make sure that you've got your water next to you. Why, you're like, why, why do I need the water? Because when you come over here and you start to antique it, you're gonna get paint on your sponge. Every time you take off paint, I want you to clean it in here. That way when you go back into your antiquing glaze that it's kept pure and that way you've not gotten it dirty. You'll understand that in just a minute. Yes, ma'am. If the pot becomes wet, will the finish run off of it? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yay! That's the whole point. Um, as far as, that's why we've got to seal it. So that's why we're at this stage. Now we're gonna antique it. Because look at the, let's look at these cute pots again that we love. See that way, these are what you're seeing in these really expensive um, cute little um, home decor shops when they've got these um, pots and things that are like this guys they cost four or five times what these do and that's why I'm trying to show you today if you're just tuning in how to be able to create this look and how fun and easy it is all right so the first thing we've done we've mixed up our Strasburg white milk paint we've painted our pot entirely now we're gonna antique it so we've taken our antiquing glaze which is here and we're gonna use this to be able to antique our pot so take your seawall sponge, immerse that in there, and then watch this, here's the fun part. So I'm gonna dab it on here just a little bit. It's okay if it runs, it's part of the beauty of it. And I usually let it saturate for just a minute, so I'll go all the way around. That way it just takes a couple of minutes. You see how I'm working kind of fast, and I'll allow it to try to have a wet edge. Now, here's what I'm talking about. I've gotten paint on this, it's kind of hard to see it, but there it is because I'm taking it off. Now look at this, I'm gonna clean it, I'm gonna come back over here in my water. See, look at all that paint that's come off. That's the milk paint, that's the beauty of it. When you wanna antique something like this, you can't use the one-step paint, it's not going to antique. That's the beauty of doing this milk paint. All right, so now I'm gonna squeeze that out. Make sure I try to get as much paint out of there as possible. And now I'm gonna come back into my glaze again, all right? So now come back, it sat there for just a second, and now I'm gonna be putting a little bit more pressure. Um, what I normally like to do when I'm antiquing these pots, I'll start on this top part and I'll take a little bit off. Isn't this fun? This is how we're able to make this look old and aged, and I'm loving it when it runs like that. Don't worry. Um, that just makes it look like it's a little bit more aged when you get to it. 
but look at the pressure that I'm putting. Look at how I'm turning my sponge. See how I'm pressing that into that and lifting it. I'm not scrubbing it like this. I am pressing it in and I'm allowing it to kind of lift. Love that. There's no way that you could ever get this kind of look with any type of sandpaper. This looks authentic and natural. Now look, I've kind of gotten some paint on that. I'm gonna put it back in my water and I'm gonna clean it. Yes. How long can the paint be stored after it's mixed and how is it stored? Okay, that's a good question. So the question was, how long can the paint be stored um, and then where should it be stored? So it needs to go in a Tupperware container after you've worked with it um, and you need to put it in the fridge. Why? Because it's milk. And that way you've got about a two week shelf life. Uh, I would try only mix up a little bit at a time when you want to work with it. So that way, if you want to use it several days from now, it's not a problem. But here's the other major tip. When you've put it in the refrigerator, make sure you take it out and let it get to room temperature first. And it may have thickened over a period of time, so it's okay to add a little bit of water to it. And then you're good to go. Yes? Can this technique be done on glass canisters? No. No. I would, you can, you can do this process if you want. Um, no, we're, we're not going to go there. I think it's best to just say this is, it's best because of the clay pots. Because here's the fun thing. See how that, um, see how that terracotta is showing through there? That's part of the beauty. That's like our first coat. That's what we're wanting to be able to get when you see these adorable little pots like this. So it's like they've been painted. They've been aged over a period of time. We want this terracotta to show up. So no, I love that. So I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna soften that. Remember, look, I'm not scrubbing it like this, guys. I'm pressing into it and lifting it. I'm gonna keep working on the top just a little bit. So you're gonna work your way around and you, I want you to be kind of careful too. Don't take off too much. I don't want it to look too spotty. Um, everybody's is gonna little, get a little bit, look a little bit different. But here's the other thing. Um, if you take off too much, just come back with your sponge or whatever you're working with and pat over it and then let it dry and you can keep on going. Does that make sense? So you can't mess this up. There's absolutely no way. All right. Are, do we have any questions on Instagram? Yes. Deb said, where are your products sold? Um, our products are sold through boutique retailers um, online and through Ace Hardware. So there's about 5,000 Ace Hardwares nationwide. We're not in all of them. Um, a lot of people don't realize Ace Hardwares are individually owned by mom and pop, so you just have to check and see if we are available at the Ace Hardware in your city. Um, and then we also um, we also sell online, so you can go to amyhowardhome.com. All right, yes? When you mix the milk paint, yes. and you're, you're going to let it sit overnight, yes. does it need to go in the fridge, or do you let it sit out? Yes, so if you are, um, okay, good question. So you're listening. Yay, I have the best viewers. Um, so when you make it the night before, the reason for that before your project, you don't have to. If you want to, you can make it the same day. Just make sure you um, shake it up really well and then you may want to strain it with some cheesecloth or a paint strainer. But if, if you make it the night before, you're fine. You don't have to put it in the fridge. Just let it stay at room temperature. And I'll put it in a mason jar and shake it up. So um, you're, it's fine to stay out the night before when you do your project, yes. I want to see a ton of great looking clay pots put on our before and after group because I want you to enjoy the bragging rights. This is real important. All right, so a lot of times I just like doing, um, doing white and having it subtle like this. Um, or you can come back and you can mix the green. So this is a combination of um, Venetian green is a color. Part of the reason for this is that you can make it look like moss, like if it's been aged. And you can come back with a uh, seawool sponge, just a little bit like this, and then dip it into your paint that you mix the same way as we did our white. And then come back and sponge on just a little bit of this, like at the bottom. That way it's kind of organic and natural. You can also use a brush if you want, but I don't want you to brush it like this. I would prefer for you to lay it down and apply it this way, because I want it to kind of come up like it's growing like you think about if moss was growing or something organic, it's going to be heavier at the base and it's going to come up like this. So that's why it's really easy when you're working with a seawool sponge, just to be able to kind of make it look natural like that. And then if you want to, you can come around the top like this 
Isn't that fun, guys? So fun. So, so fun. These are so cute. These are great gifts. If you love, um, if you have friends that love herbs and wild, um, I mean, um, fresh flowers, as far as my mom loves them planted, she doesn't want fresh flowers that are cut, she wants them in a pot, then this is a great, great gift to give. All right, yes, Instagram. Do you paint the inside of the pot with a waterproof paint so that when you pot the plant, it won't sweat and ruin the outside of it? You could if you wanted to. The one-step paint would be perfect for that. So if you've got some one-step, you can come in here and paint it. Um, usually, I'll just do it in that lip here. But remember, I, we haven't sealed it yet. So stay tuned on that. All right, so what I want you to do is after you apply the green, come back and antique it just lightly, just like we did the white, but just barely touch it. Um, so that way you're going to have it aged just a little bit like this. You can put it on just a little bit thicker. Um, but I do want you to come back. I'm going to take just a little bit more water, and you can age it just a little bit. Main thing is, I don't want you to take off too much. Sometimes people get um, a little happy with antiquing it. Less is more, guys. We're just going for texture here. All right. So you see I put my sponge in water to get it soft first, then I'm getting it in some of the antiquing glaze. And then I'm going to come back, just kind of wear it just a little bit, like this. And if you want to, sometimes I'll come back um, with a little bit of white paint again when I'm completely finished, but I want to show you a little trick. So some of you may not know, I have a sister company. Um, it's called a Maker Studio, and we have a product that's called Chalk Art. And we have these Tromesh stencils that allows you to be able to create um, really cute pieces of art on things and this is a perfect situation where I want to add a little bit of detail and art on it like this so you don't have to be artistic necessarily everyone is creative so don't tell me you're not creative all of us are creative um, I like creating the tools that allows you to be able to do things just like this all right so this stencil that comes through a maker studio you can go to a makerstudio.com um, we have these stencils and I'm going to cut this. I want this word out of here. So you, you, can, you can cut these. They're adhesive. And you can wash them and use them over and over again. And I'm going to actually, let me see. I'm going to cut this out like this. So I can come back and, and join them in together. All right. So now I'm just going to separate this from the backing. And I'm going to lay this down on my pot like this. It's completely dry. I wanted to make sure that second coat of my green is completely dry. And then I'm going to take one of our spreaders and I'm going to dip into this chalk art. This is a matte chalk art. It's water-based. It goes a long way. And then I'm just going to spread this. This has a mesh to it. This is not like working with a silhouette or a cricket. This has a mesh. So as I'm pressing this chalk art in here like this, it's going to give me a beautiful artistic detail on my pot that's going to make it look like it's even that much more expensive. Cool thing is there's no, there's no smell. I don't have to worry about... Um, if this does get on my clothes, all I have to do is wipe it off. It's water-based. Just clean it with soap and water. All right, so I've pressed that in. And that way I've got this adorable word on here. These are beautiful French words from our little sheep. So I'm going to come back, and then that will dry in about five minutes. And then I'm going to come back, and I'll just lay this down next to it. To continue on with my pot all right so now here's the thing you need to make sure to do after we get through doing the decoration on this it's going to dry down to this beautiful matte finish that's part of the reason why that chalk art is so great um, because it's going to be matte just like the rest of the milk paint that we were working with but we do need to seal it so if we're going to put these outside it's important to seal it if we're going to use it inside you don't have to but I do like to protect it so, um, because if you get water on it, um, if you get different food on it and you want to try to wipe it clean, it's going to affect the finish. 
So I'm gonna take a little bit of our matte sealer. I'm gonna pour this in here. Are we good on questions with everybody? Come on, Instagram. Is everybody asleep? Everybody's eating lunch. Um, yes, Facebook. Are the stencils reusable? The stencils are reusable, yes. You can go to amakerstudio.com and um, you can, I can easily just come back with a little tub of water and wash that stencil and let it dry upwards. We have videos over there on that and Facebook Lives. Um, and then that way I can use it again and again. So I could do a lot of pots. A lot of you may be doing this and going, I could sell these. That's why I love working with creatives because you could definitely sell these on an Etsy shop. You could sell these to maybe a home store that show them what you do and that way they can, um, they can sell them in the summertime. If not, it's great to be able to do for yourself and great as gifts to be able to give to people. You know, Father's Day is coming up, so don't forget. All right, so what I want to do, I do want to make sure that I seal this. That way it's protected. So that way if you painted the inside, guys, just come back and paint it with the sealer inside. You want to do it fairly quickly, and that's going to seal it from any water or moisture. You're going to be fine as far as with the dirt in there and, and protecting it. All right, so look, on the outside, I'm gonna work quickly all the way around. You're gonna see that it's white, but it's gonna dry down to a matte finish, and it's gonna be protected. And it's as simple as that. It's gonna take about 10 minutes for that to dry down, and then you're gonna have a beautiful finish that's gonna be protected that you're gonna be able to enjoy for years to come. All right, so now you know how to be able to create personalized antique clay pots. It's as easy as mixing your milk paint um, and being able to come back and layer colors if you want to go into greens and blues. Um, white's very provincial looking. It's, it's, it's something if you go to the south of France, if you're in Paris, wherever, they're going to have all kinds of white painted pots. Um, so I love starting with the white and then adding color from there. Yes? Someone must be just joining, but they're asking again about the glass containers versus terracotta using that technique yeah well here's the deal so yes there are sometimes there are ceramic glass pots that you'll put plants in but the whole point of this is to make it look very old and kind of vintagey something that we would find in Provence um, or at a Paris flea market and it's best to start with terracotta or the clay terracotta pots are so inexpensive to get uh, that it makes it for a fun easy project um, and it's really easy to do. So let's stay away from ceramic or glass pots and stick with the uh, terracotta. Great question. All right, guys, um, have a great weekend. Hopefully I'll see some of you out at estate sales um, and garage sales this weekend. Be sure and join our before and after group on Facebook because we want you to enjoy the bragging rights. Have a great weekend, everybody.